Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, where I watch shit so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about season six, the final season, episode one of Amazon Prime's The Expanse, entitled Strange Dogs. Um, I didn't know anything about this title prior to doing a little research after watching it. I haven't read the books, full disclosure. Uh, some of you, hopefully some of you, are here watching this video who were with me when I reviewed season five, episode by episode. This is the first time that I've reviewed a show episode by episode and then came back for a, few, uh, for a future season. Like, I just haven't been doing this that long. But um, for those of you who were here for season five's coverage, you already know this, but I haven't read the book. So I was unfamiliar with this title until I did research. And apparently this is the title of an Expanse novella that covers what happens in this first scene that we see in this episode, which starting right off about cool shit that happened in this episode that was one of them because i was i was really blown away with what i was seeing because i i'm like what i'm like are they showing some a different show by accident like, like what the fuck is this like this is like lord of the rings or some shit like it, these weird animals and 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 wildlife and fauna and all this all this kind of stuff and i'm like this shit seems like it's in a different world like this is like a fantasy show like what is this and then we come to find out that it's actually Laconia, which we saw at the end of last season, and that we know that uh, Martian uh, MCRN folks are going to be uh, populating. And I, I'm excited for that because I'm, I'm wondering how they're going to handle this this aspect of the storyline. I didn't spoil myself on the novella because I didn't want to spoil myself on what the show might do with it. But I'm interested to see if they do something kind of like what uh, AMC is doing with Better Call Saul, where... They have these uh, scenes at, I think it's at the beginning, and I think they do another one at the end of each season where they show Saul post the events of Breaking Bad, even though Better Call Saul happens pre-Breaking Bad. They show him as Eugene, and it's like these black and white scenes that happen, uh, that, that, that take place post the events of Breaking Bad. And they have those, I think, at the beginning and end of every season. And we still don't know, because there's one season left, how that's going to play out. And how that's going to end. And I'm wondering if that's the plan right here is to give this like Laconia storyline like a little bit of advancement in each episode. Kind of like to open it. Like you get your little Laconia piece and then like they play that out over the course of these six episodes. Speaking of which, if you didn't know, this final season is only six episodes and they're not even uh, extra long. Like this one was 40 something minutes. So uh, I it, it, I don't know. I, I'm a little concerned with their plan for trying to end a show that has books worth of events left to play out trying to end it in six episodes that might not even be an hour long a piece like I, it really feels like amazon just wants to get this show out of here which is interesting because it has such a, a a strong fan base like a lot of people love this show and i don't understand why it seems like amazon really just wants to get it the fuck out of here even this episode it actually felt uh almost smaller in scope than the way the show felt from season one going on so like you look at season one it felt small in scope but as as you move through the seasons it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and expands and expands and now with this season it almost kind of feels like it's shrinking down a little bit but uh we'll get into that later and over the course of uh over the course of this season right now i think overall this episode was solid starting out it was a good episode to kind of uh to to start a season where you know you got to wrap up some stuff you know, you know, for in, in a short period of time, but also to kind of use that as a way to kind of like catch up people who, you know, because it's been however long it's been, at least a year or so since season five ended. So if you didn't, you know, rewatch it or watch maybe like a, there, I did watch it, but there is a thing within uh within Prime where it has like a three minute recap of of seasons one through five up to that point. Now, of, of course, with three minutes, there's a lot you're not covering, but they do have recaps out there, but if you didn't watch this recap, you might be kind of lost on, okay, what happened at the end of season five, you know, and just kind of try to get caught up, right? So what this episode did was it, it kind of, it, it, it caught you up on what's happened in between, which kind of like helps to also serve as a refresher for season five. Because like we find out, is that something in my beard? Oh, it's just water. Um, <laughs> I'm a messy drinker. Uh, um, it's been six months since the events of season five. And they kind of use that, like, 
here's what happened during those six months as also a way to kind of remind you like here's what happened in season five so it's a it's a it's a, it's a smart move and they have a nice little uh montage that plays after the opening sequence that kind of shows all that stuff and i, I like that scene because it has some like really cool visuals because like one of the things that i find coolest about these end of the, the these story arcs at the end of the uh, at the end of the show's run is this Marco's attack on Earth? Like I, I I'm fascinated with what that must be like and what that might have looked like because we found out about it but we didn't get to really see it and we saw it here and the, it, in this montage we saw bits of it and then we also find out that it didn't stop with that. Like Marco has been essentially bombarding uh, Earth with with uh with meteors or whatever they've been they've been striking them down before they fully hit earth but it's apparently uh just crippled them as far as doing anything offensively or to even allow imports because all they're doing they're just concerned with this constant barrage of attacks and i think that's a pretty cool a pretty cool storyline as well so um i found those visuals to be sick and i'm really uh I i've enjoyed learning about how marco's uh attack on earth has impacted life on earth and we see that uh, in this episode, a little bit more of that, but I'm, I'm going to save that because I got my notes here kind of like organized by the different groups of characters that we see. Uh, so um, starting off with with Earth, uh, we learned that essentially Marco has kind of like wrestle control of the belt. Uh, he's got a whole lot of belters behind him. Like I said, he's been he's been uh, <laughs> pounding Earth with media. I'm a fucking child sometimes. Like I should have been able to say that without laughing, but I, I, I couldn't. But um. He's been pounding the earth with these meteors and they've been breaking them up. And there's a scene with Ava Sarala and Bobby, who is still her uh, her uh, accomplice, I guess you could call it. And uh, she kind of basically Ava Sarala says, like, even though we are are still we're, we're stopping these meteors before they hit Earth, they're still fucking up our atmosphere and causing like this nuclear winter, like this what looks like snow. But it's really just, you know, like fucking I don't know, contamination and shit like that. And uh, she says something. I, I think I wrote the line down. Um yeah, she says every rock kills them a little more, even if they miss. So, um, yeah, that that that's a that's kind of like what I was looking to see. Like, I I, I enjoyed seeing kind of like the ramifications of Marco's attacks on Earth, and then also learning that he's still doing it, and that that it's not just we did it this one time, and the ramifications may last f until maybe even Earth is destroyed. It's a thing where like we did it this one time, and it fucked up Earth, and we're continuing to do it, and it's continuing to fuck up Earth. So like. I like that. I, I don't know. I'm I'm really fascinated with that with that aspect of the storyline. Um, we also learned that Marco is big on uh, like speeches that rally everyone up. You know, he says that you know we're gonna make series the capital uh, of of the free navy and all this good stuff. But we also find out he's not really doing a great job of making sure that these people are taken care of. And they do an interesting thing with Philip, where you know Philip is trying to kind of like uh, convince Marco and uh, that other woman who he's talking with, whose name escapes me, um, you know, to do stuff to, to help the people. And, and Philip is, is dismissed. And we see that a lot in this episode. And I wonder too, if it was, uh, well, I don't wonder, it definitely is, but we see Philip kind of like, Philip, Philip just trying to fuck. Like that's all <laughs> that Philip's a young guy. I don't know how old he's supposed to be in the show, but I feel like he's supposed to be a teenager. So, so Philip kind of comes off like a petulant child in a lot of this episode, right? And he is to a degree, like I said, he's only concerned with fucking, but I think there's some other things going on there that I think makes Philip kind of interesting. Like I read an article that kind of made Philip sound like the most unlikable character on the show, but I think that's, that's the case of that person not going beyond the surface level. And like you see Philip just out here trying to fuck and have a good time or whatever. And you're like, oh gosh, he's annoying. But you can tell Philip's dealing with a lot of guilt, I think, over everything that's happened with, with all of the decisions that him and his father have made, whether that's uh, how they've treated Naomi, whether that's, you know, the, the meteors at Earth, you can tell he feels guilt over it because he never wants to really claim it. He doesn't really want to talk about it. When uh, his friend starts to kind of use it as a way for him to get laid, he leaves the room. So you can tell he's dealing with a lot of uh, conflicting emotions about that. You know, he wants his father's approval, but at the same time, he doesn't approve of what his father's been doing. And then you add on to that the fact that he's getting kind of like dismissed, you know, by his father when it comes to like trying to take a bigger role in the leadership. So I think they're doing interesting things with Philip here. I think we're kind of ultimately moving toward a place where Philip leaves Marco and sides with 
uh, Naomi and the and the crew on the Rossi. But um, you know, when you have these kind of like set up episodes like this first one, you don't have a whole lot of time to like really kind of like slow build toward that. So you know, we've already got in this episode some kind of clear red flags going on with Mark uh, with Philip. I'm sorry that could kind of lead us in that direction. But I found that stuff really interesting, even though, like I said, on the surface, he just seemed kind of like a petulant child who just wanted to fucking have a good time. It's like, oh God, he's obnoxious. Kind of like Joffrey or something from Game of Thrones, even though Joffrey was was scared to fuck. <laughs> um, oh, and then, and, uh, and talking about the uh, uh, him and his, his feelings over all of his actions, after he gets rejected a second time by that bartender, he then lashes out and leans into that perception. Like, like you guys owe me. Like, I've done all this great stuff, yada, yada, yada. And then he ends up killing his friend, which I felt was like, that was a bit extreme. And when I say a bit extreme, obviously killing someone is extreme. But I mean, even within the context of, of Philip's character direction, I just feel like killing his friend, because it wasn't like an accident. Like, he did it. And like that felt like a little bit... Like they're accelerating him a bit too much there. Like I, I feel like maybe that's something he works towards. Maybe in like two or three episodes where he gets to a point where he's killing motherfuckers over petty arguments. But uh, I don't know. That felt a little bit of an extreme decision for for the writers to make for his character. Put it that way. Not because obviously killing him is an extreme decision. Period. But um, still interesting. Uh, interesting stuff. I think with Philip. Uh, we also catch up with Drummer, who she has a, a a little bit of a mangled crew now after, you know, she lost some people uh, due to her decisions in season five that kind of favored Naomi over the crew. Uh, it's her and kind of like a skeleton crew at this point. And they also got a bounty out on, on, on them as well, which we you know can assume obviously Marco wants to take them off the board. And I think he raised the bounty on what he said. I think he said by 20% or something like that or 20,000. I feel 20 sticks in my head, but I, I want to say 20% or something like that on both uh drummer and on the Rossi. But uh we see them kind of like, you know, a little bit of a skeleton crew there and there's an interesting scene where uh a bounty hunter comes and this uh what is her name? I wrote it down. Michio. Uh she's apparently some sort of relative of drummers and she gets the opportunity to, to, to make a big play here. And drummers like on my signal, I want you to hit thrusters or something. I think it was thrusters. Yeah. I want you to hit thr thrusters. Cause we got to wait. We got to time this perfectly. And then she goes now. <laughs> and that girl had one job was to push that one button, which she said now, and she fucking missed and, <laughs> and hits this test button and, and everything goes wrong. Drummer saves the day, but where the the actual big um i think the way that the, these events play out the the, the important thing that t we take away from this is that her and uh joseph have a conversation about this girl and they say you know you know drummer's like you know this is family like mistakes happen yada 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 and joseph says like like she's a liability like she's been fucking up consistently <laughs> like we got like we got to do something about this and ultimately drummer decides that they are gonna uh essentially drop her off <laughs> like we'll scoop you back up when we're done doing dangerous shit since we can't rely on you in these situations we just go drop you off and then we'll come back and get you after the war is over <laughs> and then the girl is really broken up about it and he stops drummer like drummer starts to follow her to console her and he stops her and that felt less like a like it almost felt like they wanted us to look at it as like a mother father disciplining their child and it's like yeah, you got to let your child just just accept this and we can't be coddling her. But Joseph made the decision. He convinced her that that was the right thing to do. And then he stopped her from consoling her. And it made me wonder, like, is, is Drummer starting to possibly lose control uh, of this crew? So I, I don't know if that's the idea that the show meant to plant into my mind, but it did. Like, it made me think, like, is he kind of like slowly but surely kind of like taking control of the ship through her or like, you know, she she's the one who vocalized the decisions, but he's the one that's in her ear telling her what to do. I, I, and that's that could be an interesting take as well. Not a take, but an interesting direction to take uh, drummer as well over the course of these last five episodes. Um, and then lastly, there's a lot of tension on the Rossi. Uh, you know, it's been 187 days. I, I wonder if they chose 187 <laughs> uh, arbitrarily or if they knew that that's like, uh, I don't, it's like the police code for murder or something like that. Like there's a 187, but, um, it's been 187 days. They've been on this recon mission and they haven't really had time 
to really deal with Alex's death. And that comes through uh, multiple times. Like it comes through short in a kind of like short, quick way where we see Amos kind of like pause on that plate, that commemorative plate that they put up for the crew. And and the camera kind of zooms in heavy handedly on Alex's name. Like I <laughs> like I got it when he paused looking at it. I'm like, oh, he's thinking about Alex. Then the camera kind of like like in case you don't know Alex, <laughs> but um, then it comes through in a lighter way there. But it comes through much more heavily uh, in an interaction that Naomi and Amos have over Peaches. I'm gonna call her Peaches by the way. I, I'm not gonna do the like like if Amos call her Peaches, I'm gonna call her Peaches. I'm Clarissa. No, I'm gonna call her Peaches. Um, <laughs> Uh, Amos kind of like leans into Naomi a little bit like, hey, what's your problem with Peaches? And she's like, you, basically she accuses him of of using her as a replacement, an inadequate replacement for Alex. And he accuses her correctly, by the way, of having made uh, questionable decisions without consulting them, which she has absolutely done. So it's kind of like, lay, one, lay off of Peaches, but also who the fuck are you to question me about bringing Peaches on board after all the wild decisions that you made and then told us after the fact. So like he made a great point. And then they seem to like really end that on a bad note. Like, like, like they don't fuck with each other no more. And as we all know, that's, that's the longest standing relationship that we know of on this show. Because even when, as Holden comes into play in season one, when we meet Amos, he's already got us established relationship with Naomi. So like, that's a long time friendship that it looks like is about to crumble I don't think it will, but they're going to they're going to play with this a little bit. And, and I'm kind of here for it. I feel like it's going to be interesting. I think ultimately they'll be fine. But I'm here for that. I'm here for that tension a little bit because, you know, when you got shit, you got to iron out, you got to iron it out. Um, and then there's also a little bit of a tension between Holden and Naomi as well. So, you know, if you remember, Naomi had the whole situation where she had to get off of that, uh, get off of that ship and she did like that that jump or walk or whatever to the other ship and she was all emaciated and and, and face was all messed up and she almost died and all, all this kind of stuff. The whole thing that ultimately ended up with Alex getting killed anyway. You know, all, well, not, not getting killed, dying. But, you know, Naomi had a rough go of it is my point. And then we end up in this situation where I, I, I'm not going to explain everything that happened here. But, you know, they, they get into it with another MCRN ship. Uh, well, I'm sorry, with one of uh, Marcos's, uh, Marcos, uh, oh, fuck, I forget the term. Well, some small ship uh, of Marcos, and they find it through that they end up finding this drive that has a reactor that I, I believe triggers the uh, the meteors to to come at the Earth, and Holden tries to <laughs> Holden tries to I guess dismantle it or something, and he accidentally triggers it. And Naomi is screaming at him to just bail, like get off of that asteroid, you know, get the fuck out of there right now. And he just starts beating the shit out of this thing. Like, okay, that's your solution. Like you just set off this reactor and she's saying, get out of there now. And your solution is to just beat the shit out of it. And that to me was probably, there's been a whole lot of holding ass moments. And you guys, if you've watched the whole show, if you're watching this, you've watched the whole show. You've seen Holden make a lot, make a lot of stupid fucking decisions in a Holden ass way. That was the most Holden shit I've ever seen. <laughs> like the um, what was the line from Avasarala? Like don't don't put your dick in it. It's already fucked it up already. <laughs> that's what, that's what he was doing. It was already fucked, and he put his dick in it. <laughs> he put his dick in it even more. And the fact that that worked out was absolutely ludicrous. But I did enjoy that scene because there was a lot of. I, one, I love anything where they're kind of like just like openly out in space. And there's a scene early in the episode with Amos uh, kind of like doing like this spacewalk or whatever. And I love like the visuals of that. And then I also love like thinking about what that would be like to actually experience. And then like the tension of like that they did a great job with the magnetism of the reactor and his his uh, I think what was that a wrench like just like hitting hitting the thing and then getting closer and faster, closer, faster, closer, faster. Like they really, they use that to great effect to build up the tension in that scene. So like that was a great scene up until Holden started holding <laughs> And even then it was a stupid thing for him to do, but it was so holding that it was like, I couldn't help but kind of like laugh at it. Like he's really just going to try to beat the shit out of this thing until it's done, <laughs> until it doesn't work anymore. And then it works. 
And then he tries to give this explanation to Naomi for why he did it. And she's just like, get the fuck back off the shit, man. Like, <laughs> like, and all I could think about was the Avicerala line about don't, don't put your dick in it. It's already fucked it up already. And my other favorite line about Holden's behavior where he says, like, I saw a button and I pushed it. <laughs> and, and Fred Johnson just goes like, that's just how you live life, isn't it? That's how you go through life. Just push your buttons and shit. See what happens. But... I thought that was a great, <laughs> I'm like crying from laughing at Holden being Holden so fucking bad. But um, after that, uh, uh, Naomi gets some information where they can essentially find the spider ship that's triggering all this. So they're like, if we can go take this out, we can finally, you know, kind of like punch Marco back, essentially. And it could be a, you know, a win for Earth, which uh, they desperately need. It could be an L for Marco, which he desperately needs because he's a fucking prick. So, um... That's where we're setting up, heading into episode two. They're going to go try to find the spider ship. I think it's Azure Dragon, I believe was the name. Yeah, yep. They're going to go try to find that. Um, Avasarala seems to have some sort of plan, unless she's referring directly to uh, Holden's plan, because she's talking to Bobby about it. And she says something like, we need we need a win or something to that effect. And then she says, you have something in mind. And she says, yeah. Is that something separate from what Holden's doing? Or is she referring to what Holden's doing? I, I, I'm not sure. But... Uh, a couple of quick thoughts. I said all last season that they were building up Bull to be the new, uh, 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 I, say, I don't say captain, but like, not captain, but like the <laughs> the motherfucker to drive the ship. I don't know why, pilot? I, <laughs> I don't know why I'm forgetting words right now. Uh, but I was setting, they were setting up Bull to be the new, the new, the new person. And then like, he's not, he wasn't in the episode at all. And they have a scene where Naomi's piloting the ship and she says like, oh man, I just realized this is the first time I've ever had to do this. And I I guess Naomi's taking that role. I don't know. I really thought they were setting up Bull to be that person. It makes me wonder if something happened behind the scenes to where he wasn't willing to give the commitment necessary to do that role. Because like I guess I felt like they put in the work to make him that guy. And then he doesn't appear in this episode at all. So I thought that was kind of strange. Um, I already mentioned what I was going to say about Drummer kind of seemingly uh letting joseph kind of like take control a little bit and then also um i liked when after they decide that they want to go after this spider ship uh naomi seems conflicted like she's like tired like oh my god we doing this shit again and she mentioned something about uh having to hunt people who she used to call brother or something to that effect like having to hunt her own people these belters and i think that's gonna make for interesting conflict as well so like you could have some conflicted feelings from Naomi, especially to her hold it if he's pushing all this. And then we've already established the tension with Amos and Peaches. And I feel like those are going to be kind of like little interesting subplots that can that can just, you know, kind of like help further the the uh, the family nature of the crew. So that could be interesting. I, I'd say I'm most interested in seeing this Laconia stuff, honestly, like totally new visuals, totally new world, the idea of a world on the other side of the ring and and. And even talking about the ring and all this kind of shit, all, everything that they built up throughout the course of this show, the 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 ways it makes me think about uh, just like what our actual interstellar life could be like, and the idea that like there's now a whole ring out there and you could go through the ring, and now you got other worlds out there that the MCRN is populating, and and potentially according to this uh, this recap of this novella, setting up like a a, a government. Uh, on 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 laconia like i'm most interested in that shit like that sounds really interesting and i'm really interested in the uh obviously whatever happens with marco versus the earth and 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 the how what he's done has devastated earth and how the rossi and the crew are going to come after him and try to stop him so five more episodes left i'm going to cover all five obviously um, I wanted to get this one out sooner. My daughter was sick today, so she had to stay home. So I wasn't able, I watched it Thursday night, but I wasn't able to get an opportunity to record this video until it's about three o'clock now. So uh, uh, on Friday, but going forward, these next five Fridays, I plan on getting these videos out earlier. If I'm not, if I don't watch it Thursday night, I'm going to watch it first thing Friday morning and record videos. So um, I hope to get these out in the AM hours on Friday, noon at the latest. So that's my goal. We'll see what happens, and I'll see you guys next week with episode two. Peace.